this week, the first thing we did was uh, change the functionality uh, functionality of these buttons. So normally, it was didn't really differentiate between the buttons. You just clicked one, and it would ask you to just put in a call to uh, the proper authority, like Ocean Hazard, call Galveston Beach Patrol, something like that. And there was no way to know exactly who was getting contacted. But so what we did is we split them up into their own different method by contacting, like specifically drowning. So you contact 911, but they would know exactly why you're contacting them. So I can go ahead and send them. Well, on my phone here, I'll, I'll just do it real quick. So I'll call Marine Mammal, and that's gonna put in a call to the Texas Marine Mammal Stranding Network. Allow it. Okay, just, okay I'm just gonna hang up real quick. And uh, so in group chat, it'll send out a notification to all the users uh, who called and why. So new marine mammal reported near tower, and we're still fixing on getting the towers put in there. Yeah, so we have, we have that set up for all our different um, Yeah, for each of the six different, different events. Buttons. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the 901, and direct each. Yeah. Right, the direct, direct, direct to the lifeguards. Right, the general purpose kind of call. Mm -hmm. um, and so let's see some other other changes we've got here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new missing person real quick. Um, just put in some real quick info just so we have uh, something to so put a valid tower number. We've kind of changed the validation a little bit so that users can't put in like for example a tower that doesn't exist and things like that. Um, submit a new report so we have uh, we've uh, tinkered with our um, sorting and filtering so we have um, based on the tower that you input for the missing person report um, it'll show based on your location um, kind of how close how close that missing person is to uh, your location from the tower coordinates which we have set up in the database um, and so let's see where was let's see. if I click on the most recent and we'll see the missing person that I just made. Um, and you can see we've got, um, we've changed up the layout a little bit. We have the uh, kind of a more light scheme. It used to be kind of a darker uh, white on black scheme, but we've changed it to match the rest of the app's layout just to keep things consistent. Um, and we also have, we had hard-coded strings before for all of our information, like um, um, which, for example, for example um, some kind of uh, one of the wave watchers in the Galveston Beach uh, reports a missing person. Now it'll say who, wh like which of the wave watchers submitted that report, um, and we also have the date that the uh, that the report was submitted. Before this was kind of hard coded strings, um, and we also have we've changed the formatting for our time so that it's more legible. We've got date and the time there. Before it was kind of like a like an epoch time. I don't think that's how you pronounce it. Um, and. Um, so we've also got, um, we're working on the closed closed cases. So let's say um, if someone went missing and then a uh, wave watcher or the, a lifeguard finds them, um, then we have closed cases. And so that fil this filters out, so we only get the closed cases that we have. And so we have, uh, these are kind of like old debug um, tests, so it's just found by no user. Do I do think we have any? Yeah, all right. okay. Yeah, so we're still we're still working on getting like live data set up with the found by um, kind of uh, functionality, but so it, it's all there. We just have to get get kind of all hooked up. Um, but so that'll be really useful for our users, so they can keep track of okay, we you know we know that this person went missing and now they're found, and that'll send a notification to everyone through the chat that Paul was talking about before. All that kind of interlinking, all that functionality, so all the way watchers are on top of. Uh, on top of things, and so we've got these, uh, all these different. So I just the missing person I just made here shows up on our thirty minutes um, tab. We've got a bunch of different filters, so you can get the most recent info. You can get thirty minutes to an hour, hour to two hours, two hours to three. We got three plus for the entire day. This is one I made a little earlier. You 
can see all the information still here. This is and see this is recorded by me because I made this on my own app on my own phone instead of on Advan's laptop, like, like right here. Um, and then we've got reports from over a day up to I believe like a week. I forget exactly what our cutoff time is. Um, but yeah, that way we can see. You know, you have a in case of the really critical. You know, someone who's been missing for longer than 24 hours, for example, a really extreme case, we have a way to keep track of those really important cases so that Wave Watchers can kind of prioritize better how to use their resources. Um, I think I think that's pretty much it for like functionality-wise, right? Um, and the rest of what we've been working on is kind of behind the scenes, you know, working on our code quality, kind of taking the, all the suggestions from our, uh, our code review and just fixing up our functionality, getting our um, getting our code quality up and our testing, get increasing our test coverage, our code coverage. Anything, anything else? Can I stop like this? Oh, I, I guess I didn't show the, the notification that comes in on the chat for, uh, not only for the missing, not only for our other like drowning and things like that, but also the missing oh, person is also shown. So if I go to one of our open chats here, our group chats rather, then It'll say new missing person near new missing person. I don't know how you scroll on this. Yeah, okay. New missing person near Tower Five because that's the tower I put in. So it works for that one because that one actually has a tower attached to it. This one doesn't right now. The uh, the other alerts. So that way everyone in the chat gets a, a way to see a gateway update. Because before they were doing this on WhatsApp and they had to manually put in all this information. It was really easy for them to get lost. So now the system kind of automates all that for them. It makes it really easy for them to communicate. So I think that's pretty much. Pretty much it. Okay, thank you. Um, I was curious, uh, where is the data stored for all of these things? It's stored. Or, or, on or a, rephrase, where would it be stored? Uh, right now, it's being stored on a um, AWS server provided by the sponsor. I apologize. Uh, you're you're cutting say out it, on that. Say loud, please. Oh. Um, it's being it's being stored on a, a Amazon Web Services server set up by sponsor. Okay, and so so in, in reality, uh, what, what, how would this be accessed by the users? Uh, you know, is security built in? I'm just trying to get a picture of uh, not exactly what you have done, but what would be the reality in terms of how the data is accessed, how it's uh, controlled, things like that. Ask me to repeat if you don't understand. Could could you restructure the question? I'm not sure what it really is. So so uh, how is the information secured? How is it being secured? Um, right now, it's just being secured with the uh, auth account that we have set up in the very beginning. Uh, we haven't been showing it anymore since it's kind of set up and done. Um, but that's how it's being. Uh, right now, for the moment. Yeah, so we have uh, auto accounts we'll be setting up for um, for each of the Wave Watchers so they can use the app properly. Otherwise, they won't be um, if you have the app somehow, but you don't have an account, you won't be able to log in, of course, right? And uh, we have control to lock out users, things like that. We have kind of like security in, in check there because it, it could be potentially sensitive information, you know, coming through for the missing person reports and just you know things like that. So. And, and, and is the data immutable? Uh, if once somebody puts in the data, they can't go in and alter it uh, just for the sake of um, you know, legal follow-up later on. You know, if somebody wants to go through and trace through and say, hey, uh, did somebody drop the ball? Like, for example, the recent case in, uh, I guess, Tennessee, where you're going back and seeing why did, you know, why did they let the child die? There are, there are legal uh, you know, ramifications to it. So is, is the immutability of the data somehow uh, you know, enforced in the application? Um, the only thing the user would be able to change is if, the, if they found the missing person, that's it. OK. That, that's all I have. Thank you. OK. Thank you. Thank you.